Hello again from my front porch. Well, it is a actually a snowy day here in Iowa. Uh, here, in fact, let me let me show you what the snow, what it's doing right now. I know if you'll be able to see it really well, but you know you can kind of see it coming down, it's coming down lightly, but it's gathering, gathering out there. Uh, I'm not a fan. <laughs> not nope, 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 not a fan. <laughs> oh, come back around here. Here I am over here. <laughs> So um, uh, it's snowy day. I've been debating. I got a couple of things I need to run out and go do, and I've been debating just how important are they? <laughs> do I really need to go do them? <laughs> uh, yeah, I probably still will. But anyway, uh, and in fact, I probably need to do them here during the the, the day time frame before you know we get too close to say. Uh, time that people are getting off work because that's when the, oh people will be so stupid they're gonna be so stupid driving they always are i don't know why it's like every time it snows they forget what it was like the last time it snowed <laughs> it's like just just pay attention to what you're doing people uh so anyway uh still the, the the point of this episode though has nothing to do with the snow but i just had to tell you it's snowing is it uh, actually what i want to talk about is is a kind of serious, very serious in fact, and it has to do with our with the elections here in the United States. Uh, because uh, in, in my opinion, and again, that's, that's all this is, <laughs> that's what all of these are, <laughs> but in my opinion, our election process is under attack by those who would like to alter how things are done to make it easier to manipulate the process. And let me, let me describe for you two very high profile things that are going on right now that if those things change would be a massive manipulation opportunity that somebody who wanted to just run the board, want to do that, they would, they would, yeah. So I'll, I'll explain what I mean. Num first up, the Iowa caucuses. Of course, they're in the they're in the news right now uh, because, well, the Iowa Democratic Party sort of, floundered <laughs> with, with, with how this one went. Now, there were some changes to how they did the process of what they traditionally do, but it sounds like the real culprit was this app, this, this software that they were using to tabulate and track and report information, and apparently it wasn't up to snuff. And of course, you know, right away there's all these accusations of, well, it must have been, you know, a Trump thing or the Russians or all this kinds of whatever. And it actually turns out that it was developed by somebody who had close ties with uh, the Clinton folks, uh, that is someone who is uh, their organization funded by, in large part, by George Soros, who is a, a big uh, liberal end of the spectrum funder. Uh, and, and so, uh, it, it, you know, the allegations that this was somehow rigged because it was, you know, an attempt to foil or or hack this 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 process. It doesn't sound like that's the case. It sounds like uh, it was an inside job, <laughs> if you will. Uh, but but nobody intended, I don't think, intended for for it to, to turn out as it has. Uh, certainly, they didn't test this application, this software, well enough for it to uh, uh, to, to to function correctly because it clearly did not. Anyway, so. As a result of this debacle, uh, th there are all these renewed cries for, why is Iowa the first d d d nation? Why? why? Iowa shouldn't be, Iowa isn't represented. Why? Iowa's over 90 some percent white. What do they even know? And I got to tell you, that really burns me. That really, I mean, number one, it's racist in and of itself. Um, I mean, people quickly forget that Barack Obama, America's first African-American president, got his launch here in Iowa. And I still remember, with a bit of contempt, I remember the news reports the night that Barack Obama won the Iowa Democratic Caucus over Hillary Clinton. I remember, I remember watching national level, level, but national level reporters standing in the streets of downtown Des Moines reporting that Barack Obama has won the caucus in, of all places, Iowa. What? A, excuse me? What? Because there's this stereotype that Iowans are somehow ignorant, backwoods. But 
the current Iowa primary, uh, now that the now that the Democrat numbers have finally come in and we're starting to add tally them up, it's a very close race between the two of them. But it's but it looks like uh, and I can I can never remember the guy's name, but Pete, <laughs> I can never pronounce his last name. <laughs> uh, but you all know who I mean the the the, the mayor who's running. Uh, uh, but he's also an openly gay candidate, and he comes out on top in the Iowa caucus. Okay, again, tell me how backwoods we are and, and how ignorant and uninformed and unenlightened. And Anyway, that's getting off on a bit of a tangent there. Let's, let's talk about why Iowa is even first, okay? And to do that, you have to have a little bit of a history lesson. See, let's go back to 1968. 1968, there's all kinds of problems with the Democratic National Convention. Just it was a huge fiasco. There were there was literal violence in the streets, and police were there in riot gear. It's just a horrible moment in American political history. And that just talking about what happened all there could be a whole other discussion all of its own. So I'm resisting digging into that. But look it up, look and search it yourself if you'd like to. Um, but but at up to that time. The, all, all of the, 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 the caucuses, primary stuff were all compressed together. And, and it was just like this. It was basically, you know, a national election, uh, a pre-national election before to select the nominee. And then the, nom the selected nominee would go on to become in the actual national election. Well, so then after all of the, the disaster that, that occurred in 1968, the Democratic Party decided, okay, okay, and to, to prevent this, we're going to, we need to spread out when these, when these caucuses and primaries happen. Now, uh, that, let, let, let me pause for a moment there too. I say caucuses and primaries because they're not interchangeable terms. I mean, they, they happen at the same time and they, they, they ultimately serve the same purpose of selecting a candidate, but they function in different ways, especially here in Iowa. Uh, see, see, here's the difference. See, in Iowa, the Republicans do a primary to select their presidential candidate. And a primary meaning you walk in, you're given a slip of paper, you sign, you write the name of the person you want to be president on the piece of paper. Now, there, all of the, the people who are there who, who, who are representing a, a, a party, a candidate, uh, that, that they're able to speak on behalf of the candidate, try to, because, you know, there are people sometimes that show up at these things that, eh, kind of on the fence. They're not really questioning. And so you show up and you, you make your case. You, you say, this is why you should support the person I'm supporting. Uh, but then yeah, everyone's given a slip of paper. You write the name on there who you want. They tally up the numbers or write them on the board. And then they report those numbers up the line. Okay. Now that, that's, that's what the primary is. Now a caucus, which is what the Democrats in Iowa use, that works completely different. In a caucus, you show up and again, everybody can talk and you get their pitch and all this kind of stuff. But Ultimately, everybody is asked to, to get up and stand and basically group themselves with those who also are supporting the same candidate that you are. And then this is where the process, I, I have a little issue with the process, where I think it gets a little sketchy. Then they have this uh, 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 determination of viability. And if your group you're with is too small compared to other larger groups, then they're, they're, they're just arbitrary choice that, no, no, that group needs to go away. You need to go align with somebody else. Now, this year I'm told there were some changes made in how the process was done. Unfortunately, I was in Washington, D.C., uh, ironically, <laughs> for work. And so I was not able to go to either a primary or a caucus. So so I, I, I don't have any firsthand knowledge of, of, of what those those adjustments this year might have been made. But But the basic structure was still the same. Anyway, so so then what happens is is they, they get it whittled down to what are the most viable groups. And then, now in the past, it was a winner-take-all. Ultimately, that gets down to who is the largest group, and that's the person that gets all the votes for, for our precinct. Uh, but now this year, I understand one of the changes they made was they actually, uh, they, they, they did, they, they awarded uh, electors uh, who would uh, go on to, I assume, the county or the state convention uh, and, you know, cast their votes for, you know, certain people. And so, so when you see who won the, the Iowa caucus this year, uh, it actually is the number of electors. And so what, what the Iowa Democratic Party basically created was an electoral college. That's basically what they did. Uh, and in fact, the Bernie Sanders campaign takes issue with it because they're saying, wait a minute, if you just look at the who people wanted to vote for, 
he won the popular vote. But Pete gets the electoral college version that the Iowa Democrats have come up with. Um, now, I, I don't know because I think, again, counting the popular vote is a little sketchy because unless they actually counted everybody instead of making them reposition, then you don't really have a fair, accurate count of that either. But anyway, I, I, I you know, I, I'm not sure how that was all mapped out. I wasn't, I wasn't there. Uh, and so anyway, that segues me to the other topic, though, of the Electoral College, which we'll get to in a moment. I've already done a whole episode about that, and so I'll try not to go too deep into that again. But Iowa has been first now, because they, they spread them out, starting 1968. Well, then the next election was 1972. That was the next one that was going to come around. And because Iowa has a very complex process that we have the precincts, and then we have the, the county conventions, and we have the district conventions, and we have the state conventions, and we have, we have a multi-layer process that things go through, Iowa decided... You know, we're, gonna, we're just going to get going. We're going to get started out right away and establish itself first. Now, over the years, there has been challenge to that. And then the, the, the parties at the national level, they, they play the whole, well, you know, we'll shift these around. We'll do this thing here. And then there's these deals made. Like, for example, Iowa has this odd caucus thing that they, that they I say odd because I would prefer it was a primary like the Republicans do. Uh, and, you know, every vote counts kind of thing. Uh, but... New Hampshire has a first in the nation primary. And so apparently there's, uh, New Hampshire keeps wanting to jump ahead of Iowa. New Hampshire keeps wanting to move ahead on the calendar. And the, the, the national, the Democratic Party especially says, nope, 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 you can't do that. And the agreement to keep them in place where they are is that Iowa agrees to keep it a caucus so that New Hampshire can claim first in the nation primary Iowa's first in the nation caucus. I know, <laughs> but so so that's what that's that's the detente that they've worked out. But so so basically, since 1972, uh, Iowa has had that first in the nation status. But is that fair? Is that because you know Iowa is so white, especially today? It's snowing. <laughs> but here's here's what I want to point out to you, uh, and 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 you know you can take issue with it however you want. But the notion that the, our elected officials need to look like us in order to represent us is, in my opinion, an absolutely outlandish, outrageous, bogus, nonsense opinion. You know, just to put it mildly. <laughs> you see, I, you know, honestly, personally, personally, I don't care if the person representing me is male or female. I don't care what what their what their race is. I don't care. I don't care if they're gay or straight. I don't care what their religion is. I don't care about any of that. In fact, I I may not even care much about what they've previously done. I'm interested in who they are right now and what they stand for going forward. Now, every politician will negotiate things and will and will will make compromises. They'll say, you know, I will vote for your thing on this if you support me on this thing. And that's what I want to know. For a candidate, what are their hills that they would die on? Because they're not going to die on every hill. They're not going to fight every battle. What are the battles they consider important? What are the things over here that they want to get others to support versus what are the things that they don't really consider as important and they'll compromise on some of those things? That's what I want to know. And, and, and you can get that somewhat from someone's past record, but you really need to pay attention to what they say. And you don't get that out of TV commercials. You don't get that out of stuff posted on social media. You certainly don't get it out of news articles that are published either on, on broadcast media or on print media or online. Because uh, speaking as someone with a journalism degree and who worked in journalism, I can spot a, 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 a biased story a mile away. Oh, they read like a, it's an AP story. It's a CNN story. It's a Fox News story. It's whatever. I... I, I, I can point out to you in almost any article, I can point out to you where the author's bias is. Uh, and, and, and this notion that, well, it's in the news, so that makes it neutral. Baloney. Absolute baloney. But again, I digress. Point being, Iowa serves this role of being first in the nation not because everybody here is white. 90 some percent white is the, the that's the statistic I keep seeing thrown around I haven't looked it up to see if it's actually true what I do know is this 
even that is misleading because like there's a huge Bosnian refugee community that, that exists here in Iowa that came back that, that they came from the 70s actually was when, when some of that started uh, and and if you were to ask them what race are you when you look at the the, the, the list well let's see I'm not African American I'm not Asian I'm not Native American yeah, I guess I'm Caucasian yeah but is is a Bosnian? It, what what's being talked about as a white person in Iowa? No, what what they really mean by white people in Iowa is me, white male, middle class guy, Anglo Saxon guy like me, um, and and it's his derogatory put down term. They're all ninety percent white, you know. That's what it. But I'll tell you what, here in Iowa, we take our politics very very seriously, uh, and we hold politicians' feet to the fire. We show up at these town hall meetings. And we don't just throw them softball questions. We hit them hard with questions that that the, that a lot of pundits on media shows would never even touch. That they would never even approach. They'll never they'll never wander into that territory. But but these politicians would get held to those things on the stump while they're in Iowa, and those things what they say can 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 haunt them. <laughs> it can follow them. Uh, and and reality is there are some candidates who look good on paper, who even look good on TV, but you put them in front of a town hall meeting of Iowans who are hitting them with hard questions, and they can crumble, they can collapse. And that's important for people to know. Because one of the observations is, well, the problem with Iowa being first is it's unrepresentative, and so many candidates drop out after the Iowa caucuses or the Iowa primaries because, you know, they didn't do very well. Well, stop and think about that, too. Iowa is a fairly smaller state compared to some of the others. Uh, and and if, you've, if, if, if your campaign can't make a ground game in Iowa, how in the world are you going to make a ground game in a larger state? Because when you get to the larger states, there are fewer and fewer of these opportunities to engage directly with the candidate. More and more of what is done in larger states is done this way. On the TV, on media, on, you know, on, online, in, in those kind of disconnected fashions. So imagine with me, if you will, a world in which, say... New York, or California, or Florida, or Texas, or some large state like that, we're given the opportunity to do the first in the nation because it's more representative. You know, California or New York, th those would be really good examples of, well, they're more representative, you know, visually of the nation. But are they representative of the nation? I would argue no. No, they are not. See, people assume that because I was here in the Midwest that it's all, you know, uh, conservative people. It is not. Iowa is a very purple state. It goes red. It goes blue. It, you know, it, 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 and right now we have two Republican uh, senators. But for the longest time, we had one of each. And not only did we have one of each, a Republican and Democrat, but the two of them pretty much defined the opposite ends of the spectrum and, and they were re both of them continually reelected by the same state. Uh, so, so, I mean, it, I, I, Iowa is not as, as, as monochromatic as people would try to imply based on skin tone. Uh, when it comes to our thought process, we are quite diligent and quite diverse. Again, we launched Barack Obama. We've now launched Pete. Uh, you know, so, so give me a break. <laughs> but now imagine another state... That, that has a whole different and, I would argue, a more narrowed mindset uh, view of the world were to be able to be first in the nation. And, and you combine that with an elimination of the Electoral College, because that's the other thing. That's a lot of the people who are criticizing the Iowa caucus being first and, and using this recent debacle to go, ah, see, see, it needs to be taken out. That, that should be in the down. Iowa can't handle the pressure. Get him out of it. A lot of those same people are the ones pushing for it into the Electoral College. Now, you erase the Electoral College, you make the president, uh, the voting of the president, a popular vote on a It's basically a glorified vote for homecoming king. That's what it is. Or queen. And so the, the, uh, the, the issue I have with that is because, again, where are the population centers in these large states, in, in, these, in these places that, that we're told are more representative of the nation visually, but ideologically are not? 
those states, if they were able to keep a state like Iowa from, from being able to, to set the tone, set the bar, press these candidates to work hard, to, to demonstrate they can do the job, to demonstrate they can interact with people, those bigger states, those candidates are not going to do that kind of work there. It's going to all be in the media. It's going to be social media, broadcast media, print media. That's how they're going to reach. Oh, there'll be some events, but there'll be big arena events like you know Trump does uh, his his campaign rallies, and they're you know and they're, it's it's not little in a coffee shop thing where you get to actually interact with him and ask him questions or challenge him on anything. No, no, it's this big thing where he's the superstar up on the stage, and that's in the large states. That's what the candidates have to do because there's so many people to have to touch but they can't actually interact with them. All they can do is be the star on the stage. So now imagine a caucus slash primary system in which it starts in a state like that, going into a presidential election that is now just a popular vote. There is no electoral college. Why even worry about a state like Iowa? Either in terms of caucus or primary, or when it comes to the popular vote. In fact, why worry about any state that isn't large, that isn't massive, that doesn't have a, enough votes just in those states for you to do well in a popular vote election. And if that's the case, then again, that general election is all in social media, it's all on TV, it's all in print, it is not face-to-face, -face. it's not interpersonal. If we eliminate, if we take uh, uh, Iowa out of the mix as a first in the nation, Iowa and I assume New Hampshire. I assume I assume they're, they they would both have to be a casualty. Uh, I don't I don't know, but but if we took Iowa out of the mix because because well they're all white in Iowa, uh, with completely disregarding the 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 impact ideologically that Iowans have on challenging those candidates and making this process real and about people. If we take that out of the mix, then we depersonalize the primary and caucus process. If we take the electoral college out of the mix, we equally depersonalize that. And we make the whole thing, the whole thing of electing a president, choosing your, your party's candidate, and then going to the, to the general election, the whole thing becomes an opportunity for candidates to create a fake facade a persona made for politics that is presented to us on screen. And that is the only candidate you will ever know. Say, ah, Paul, you're, 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 you're crazy. You're, you're being conspiracy theorist. Ah, maybe, maybe I am, maybe I'm not. All I can tell you is my understanding of history, my, my paying attention to what goes on in the world around me, and my cynical suspicion of people in general and their motivations. <laughs> <laughs> tells me that there's more going on here than just, well, we need, to, we need to honor people's vote. Because first of all, if we really wanted to honor people's vote, we wouldn't even have caucuses. A caucus does not honor people's vote. So I'm just be blunt about that. But beyond that, that is used as this, well, every vote count, every vote you count, every vote you count. That's the mantra being used. But I guarantee you, if we allow whoever to manipulate the process, to change it, to take Iowa out of the mix, take the Electoral College out of the mix, your vote will not count at all. Nor will mine. And I don't care if you are in one of those large cities. Your vote ultimately doesn't count either. You're a pawn. You're being used. We need to stop allowing ourselves to be used. We need to make sure that our election our election process is not subject to destruction. This ele election destruction concept really bugs me, really weighs heavy on me, and I've devoted a great deal of time to this, and this is an exceptionally longer episode. Uh, thank you if you waited all the way through to the, to the end of this one. You may stop watching them after all this ranting this time around, but understand, I, th what I've said is not, I'm not being pro-Republican or pro-Democrat or anti-Republican or anti-Democrat, although I'm probably more anti-Republican and anti-Democrat, because <laughs> I'm independent, honestly. <laughs>
<laughs> but but this has nothing to do with the parties. That has nothing, well, a little bit, um, I suppose, because there are individuals at the top, upper echelons of these parties that just pay, play their little power games and they think that we're just the dutiful little foot soldiers and we need to stop doing that. Stop letting them treat us that way. So anyway, anyway, there you go. That's that. That's my front porch ranting for the day. That you know, I'm I'm really concerned about this election destruction mentality that I see going on. Because if these changes are to be implemented, uh, I, I I I fear what the results of those actions would ultimately provide to us. All right. Well, anyway, I'm gonna let you go. Uh, and, you know, let you mull over all that stuff. Hopefully next time I chat with you, it'll be a little more upbeat and lighthearted. <laughs> all right, with that, I'll let you go, and I'll see you all next time from my front porch.